Steve Perry, principal at the Capital Preparatory Magnet School, is joining us now from Hartford, Connecticut, to talk more about this. And Steve, thanks for joining us. Uh, you've got one of these great American stories, uh, raised by a teenage mom in an impoverished housing uh, project, basically got your bachelor's, your master's, your doctorate. How tough would it be for a young Steve Perry of today to do that? It was hard for a young Steve Perry when I was the young Steve Perry. Always speaking in third person makes me feel odd, but back then it was difficult because poverty was a barrier to the extent that we didn't have the money to pay for college. Then it was half as much as it is now. So many of my students actually get into college but can't go. So they find themselves at the local community college, and when they are at the local community college, it not just takes them longer to graduate, but they may never graduate. The graduation rates of those who transfer out are pretty low. So what happens is a lot of our students end up choosing the local state college. However, the money seems to be less even there because they don't get as much aid and the state college rates are continuing to skyrocket. It is killing those of us who work with children who are from historically disadvantaged populations, they're the ones who need it most and the ones who are being most affected. Well, and Steve, as you well know, there's a lot of uh, parents with their kids living in the basement these days. They can't find a job even if they get out of college. So is college debt really worth it? That's a question that a lot of families ask. And it's a tough question to answer when you look at it in the short term. You're not buying a college education for the next four years. You're buying it for the next 40 years. So over the course of your life, it still is worth it, though the private colleges, especially the small elite ones, are becoming cost prohibitive. And so what's interesting is there's been a change where a kid who used to get into an elite college that was small, and that was the only college they wanted to go to, is now choosing the local state college. Well, everyone's debating this of late, and you're a thinker, and you probably think quite a bit about this. What can be done, in your estimation, to lower the college costs to give more young people access like the kids you're talking about? Well, there's a lot that could be done. One of the things that is happening on most college campuses is that there's this build going on. They're building these amazing campuses, and I believe a lot of the money's tied up in the actual physical uh, plant. They're working hard to make these campuses more and more appealing. So what we're seeing is a skyrocketing uh, cost just to pay for the new buildings that are on campus. I think parents have to understand if you want a lot, you're going to have to pay a lot. Another option that I think we need to consider is some of the schools that we didn't typically consider, historically black, co historically black colleges, they're colleges that are not just for African Americans, they're for students of all colors. They're among the cheapest in the nation. And then, of course, there are community college. They also are cheaper. Steve, are, are, are parents and students becoming a little bit more savvy? Are they better shoppers than perhaps they were in the past when it comes to colleges? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Parents understand that it's not just the name that's on the college. It's what you do while you're in college. And so just because you went to an Ivy League school doesn't mean you're going to come out with a job anymore than if you went to the state college. Parents understand that. And parents are making the decision. In fact, what, I, what a lot of my parents are doing is they're saying, we'll pay for the state school and you can pay for that elite school when you go to graduate school. They understand that graduate school is now more likely than not for many of our students. We've seen uh, recently a drop in currencies, uh, the most uh, obvious uh, one being the rupee in India. Is that making it harder for the international students, would you say? Absolutely. Those students who would come over here for school are now paying so much more to come here. So in many cases, they're going to stay home. On the same token, Quite a few of the, ch the families who have the capacity to send them over to the U.S. are doing so, and they've saved for it. So it's yet to be seen, the, the overall impact, but I would imagine it could be troublesome for those people who are at the bottom end of, of the economic spectrum. And we've got about a minute left, Steve. I've, I've got to ask you about uh, President Obama, who's been talking a lot about this. Uh, Congress expected to bring up this uh, bill as well. If you were to give them uh, some of your wisdom when it comes to a higher education bill, what would you suggest? The kids that need it the most are the ones who have the least. Make sure you understand that because programs such as the GI Bill created an entire middle class where there wasn't one before. That same program and programs like that need to be expanded. If we're going to spend money on anything, let's spend it on our kids. And Steve, do you think that's likely? I hope so. I really do hope so because there is no other investment that is better than a college education. Steve Perry joining us from Hartford, Connecticut. Thanks so much. Really appreciate it.